second time invoice verification okay once we receive the goods from this vendor okay we are we receive the invoice from vendor to verify that invoice we are using the invoice verification okay that means uh, whatever we agreed the price in the po and okay and how much quantity you received how much quantity you received okay both you are comparing and you are verifying that okay that whatever we received the invoice okay this is good we we can go ahead for the payment okay that is called invoice verification what we already know about that normal invoice how we will do right so when you creating the purchase order and the goods receipt we uh, we generally do the normal invoice okay to to settle up to pay the amount to the vendor right to verify the invoice and pay the amount now there is a different types of the invoices we have in sap one is credit memo and the second is subsequent debit and third one is subsequent credit okay so let's go to first uh, normal invoice is the one okay and the second one is credit memo the third one is subsequent debit and fourth one is subsequent credit So these are the three, four options we have in the invoice verification. Okay. So when you are creating purchase order, sorry, when you are creating invoice, okay, there is a four options we can select here. Am I arvo? In am I arvo? Okay. Uh, enter this details. In the top transaction, you can see that the invoice. Credit memo, subsequent debit, and subsequent credit. These four four methods we are using. So, what what do you mean by invoice? Okay. So when you receiving the PO and when receiving the so when you created a purchase order and when we receive the goods, okay, we are verified the invoice and posted the invoice for further payments. Right, it this is a normal invoice. Okay, but when you coming to create memo, okay, if there is a after receiving after receiving the goods, okay, and we cleared, suppose we posted invoice, we posted invoice, normal invoice. Now then, after uh, verification, after verify the after verify the uh, goods okay there is uh, some goods there is there are some goods some goods are spoiled spoiled or damaged are not good okay so those goods those goods are those goods we are returning back Going back to vendor, okay. Then we will write the credit memo to get my money back. To get my money back, which we already cleared. Right. So let's say hundred pieces. Hundred pieces. The cost thousand rupees. Okay. You already paid in the invoice. You already cleared this invoice. And okay, now. There is ten pieces uh, spoiled. Okay, that means ten value. Ten means okay. Uh, it is like ten into ten, hundred rupees. So this hundred rupees value, you need to uh, you need to get the amount from the vendor. That means the amount should be created into your account. So because you already paid thousand rupees, so that means uh, this thousand rupees you already paid. Now again you are raising credit memo for. Hundred rupees. So when a finance team settle in the amount, they will deduct this so uh, hundred rupees from thousand rupees. Then they will pay remaining amount nine hundred rupees. Clear? This is the credit memo. So this is normal concept. Okay. So when you are returning the goods, you, you can use this credit memo for vendor returns also. In the vendor return process also, the last step is credit memo. Okay, when you will create this credit memo? When you already posted the invoices, right? 
you mean by subsequent debit? So subsequent debit also the process which we need to pay extra amount to the vendor, okay, without any reason. Means it might be because of the non-planned any cost, okay. So unplanned cost, unpl unplanned any cost. Maybe it is delivery cost or it may be extra cost for any charges, okay. So if you if you how to pay some extra amount, okay, then you will be going for the subsequent debit, okay. So uh, once we receive the goods, goods as per the agreed price in uh, PO, we created invoice, created invoice. Then vendor uh, requested for uh, requested extra amount for some reasons. So if you are ready to pay, if you are ready to pay extra amount amount to vendor then you can raise subsequent debit to vendor okay so basically how we can say this one the supplier charges for unforeseen handling that means any of the charges may be on delivery charges order may be with a fixed rate for the given quantity of the goods a subsequent debit charges for the extra amount without recording any effect of the quantity of the goods delivered okay okay so it might be complementary as whatever maybe you can say something like you are paying extra amount to the vendor so those process you are using the subsequent debit and obviously if it is subsequent credit means it is volta like once you receive the goods okay, as per the uh, agreed price in PO okay the invoice price is more price is more or okay or Maybe um, because maybe because of uh, marketing marketing fluctuations, fluctuations, okay, the marketing fluctuations, uh, the price uh, get down. That means uh, price down in market, and then you requesting requesting um, subsequent it for for uh, whatever for for additional paid additional payments whatever for uh, for some amount for some amount you can say okay that's an example okay suppose gold is there okay gold what do you, you one gram you paid for two thousand five thousand rupees as per the market price, you you created a PO, created PO with uh, uh, one gram value is five thousand rupees. Okay, then uh, you received the cost. You received uh, the one gram gold after after maybe some days or maybe okay, and you paid or you already created invoice. Uh, five thousand rupees now now when I, now when i just compare when i compared in market the value of goods value of the one gram gold is price is four thousand five hundred rupees then you requested vendor to pay uh you requested or maybe you discuss with the vendor okay you paid you charged more so uh, place uh, return 500 rupees that means you just uh, return back 500 rupees give me some discount or whatever maybe it depends on the vendor and you have the discussion okay then you requested vendor to uh, pay back 500 rupees or some discount so it might be 500 rupees okay then he agreed 
agreed uh, when the, then vendor agreed so for this you requested to raise so you requested means you raise the subsequent credit for 5 rupees it may be whatever the reason if you need to get the amount from the vendor then you will be creating the subsequent credit okay can you, uh, let's see how to do in the sap okay i think you already aware about this invoice right so i don't think uh, we will not explain about furtherly the invoice okay now let's go to create memo okay so i think credit memo also you are already aware about that but uh, anyway i will explain again okay for credit memo so for this uh, uh, let's say create one purchase order here me okay, 21 and and uh, vendor and uh, the pivo created i am creating pivo okay so let's say how much quantity so let's say the quantity of 100 pieces with 1000 rupees and the plant and uh, which location you want to receive okay and uh, yeah that normally how we are doing the same process i am creating purchase order here okay now the purchase order we created okay now we are doing uh, goods receipt 